Ahoy there, pirates! Marky, or Kerfuffle Hustle, here from Rare Thief. Season 2 has officially arrived! Naturally, this means we've written about a dozen articles and created a few videos to help pirates make the most of it. In this video, we'll be diving into the Merchant Alliance's newest offering, Trade Routes. While Merchant Alliance emissaries have the most to gain, other emissaries might want to keep a weather eye on these trade routes too, as they could offer up a rather profitable steal. So what are these trade routes all about? If you've ever felt the Merchant Alliance seemed a bit persnickety, you're not alone. Not only are they sticklers for time management, they also seem to predominantly traffic in finery, luxurious silks, exotic spices, and the like. Well, persnickety they may be, but they won't turn a blind eye to profit. So, it seems the Merchant Alliance has recently begun to trade in some additional, rougher commodities. Perhaps they'll permit more in the future, but for now, the Merchant Alliance has begun trading in the following seven new commodities. Unsorted silks, unfiltered minerals, unclassified gemstones, ungraded tea, unrefined spices, raw sugar, and broken stones. Essentially, pirates can purchase these commodities from one outpost and sell them at another. However, as with any trade, you won't make much of a profit buying and reselling the same item until you factor in supply and demand. The Merchant Alliance shrewdly keeps track of their inventory. Inevitably, each outpost ends up with extra of some things and not enough of others. They list these as surplus and sought after commodities, respectively. Purchasing items where they are in surplus and ferrying them over to where they are sought after will net you your greatest profits and naturally create trade routes. Now that we've got the general idea, let's get into some specifics. How exactly do these trade routes work? Each week, the Merchant Alliance will post the commodity demand for each outpost. Every outpost will have one surplus commodity and one sought after commodity. There are seven commodities and seven outposts. So as you might expect, the surplus and sought after are different for each outpost. So, for example, only one outpost will have a surplus of unsorted silks, and only one outpost will be seeking broken stones. After one real-world week, the Merchant Alliance will review their inventories and post a new commodity demand, changing which outposts sell and seek which items. Where do you find these commodity demands? Sitting on a pile of wooden crates next to each Merchant Alliance representative, you will now see a Merchant Alliance Outpost Inventory Book. This book will list each outpost's needs and accesses. Okay, but what if you're at sea and you have some commodities to sell? You probably don't want to sail to an outpost just to read that book and find out that you need to sail to another outpost. Don't worry. For that, dear pirates, you have us. We've added a new feature to your handy interactive map. It's already on the web version, and it should be in your app shortly, so keep your eyes peeled for an update. On your map, by default, you'll now see each week's trade route information hovering above each outpost. On the left, under a plus sign, you'll see what the outpost has in surplus. On the right, under the minus sign, you'll see what the outpost is seeking. You'll also find a shiny new button on the side of your map. Click that button and you'll open up a new trade route panel. There you'll see a table with the most recent commodity demands for every outpost, as well as a key to the map icons. If you'd like, you also have the option to turn off the trade route map icons. They're on by default, at least for now, in part because even if you have no intention to buy these traded goods, you might end up wanting to sell them. This brings us to emissaries. Before you can buy any commodity, you must first vote to raise your Merchant Alliance emissary flag. Reapers rejoice! 
Not only does this provide yet another incentive for pirates to raise that Merchant Alliance flag, but you don't need to be an Merchant Alliance emissary to sell this new loot. So you might be thinking, well, if I only have to raise my emissary flag to buy the commodities, couldn't I just lower it right after? Technically, sure, but you would be forfeiting the entire tempting reason to do these trade routes. As a Merchant Alliance Emissary, for each commodity you sell, you will raise your Emissary grade. If you sell at a few outposts, and touch a few ambient merchant crates along the way, you'll likely reach grade 5 quite quickly. With the Emissary Grades Multiplier effect, not only will selling sought-after commodities become a much more lucrative endeavor, you'll also be raising your rank on those Emissary leaderboards. If you're a Reaper's Bones Emissary looking to maximize your profits, you could sell your trading route plunder at their respective sought-after outposts, or you could sell at the Reaper's hideout. The Reapers are not seeking any particular trade route items, so you'll be selling at the commodity's base value, but you will get your multiplier effect of your Reaper's Bones Emissary grade. Then again, these crates are likely not what you covet most from a sunken Merchant Alliance Emissary ship. The real prize is that flag. Alright pirates, if you've decided to embrace the ticklishly targeted sensation that will assuredly come with raising that Merchant Alliance flag, let's buy out the outpost! With that Merchant Alliance Emissary flag now waving from your boat, speak with the Merchant Alliance representative. They now provide the option to browse their resources and commodities. Select Browse and then select the Commodities section. There you'll see each item the outpost is carrying and its price. As we mentioned, there are seven new commodities. For each outpost, one will be in surplus, one will be sought after, and five will simply be. When it comes to purchasing commodities, this means the outpost will offer three of the item they have in surplus, none of the item that they need, and for the remaining five, they'll offer one apiece. This leads to a total of eight offerings. You can purchase all eight if you'd like. You're investing a nice chunk of gold and you could lose those crates, so how many you buy will be up to your risk preferences and your confidence that you can sell them all. Much like cargo run crates or animal crates, just make sure that after you purchase, you remember to actually collect your purchases from the Merchant Alliance representative. When can you buy more? Ah yes, there is a cool down period after you've bought out the outpost. You can only purchase each offering once every three in-game days. In the Sea of Thieves, 6 a.m. heralds the dawn of a new day. This means if you made your purchases at 3 p.m. on the 17th, you could make these same purchases again at 6 a.m. on the 20th. So depending on what time of day you bought out the outpost, you'll be looking at a cooldown somewhere between 48 and 72 minutes. It is important to note, this limit applies to your crew, meaning anyone attached to your ship. So. If one pirate leaves and another pirate joins, the newcomer still can't purchase the previously bought commodities until the cooldown period has ended. It being tied to your crew also means that just because one crew bought all they could, that doesn't prevent another crew from making those same purchases. The cooldowns are also tied to each individual commodity. For example, you can purchase a crate of unsorted silks on the second, and a crate of unfiltered minerals on the third, and the unsorted silks will become available again a day before the unfiltered minerals would. The cooldown does not, however, affect other outposts. So even if you have completely cleaned out Golden Sands, you can still buy everything offered at Sanctuary. Okay, you've made your purchases. What more might you want to know before you go about selling? Well, for starters, there's no refunds for buyer's remorse. <laughs> this means you can sell your commodities at any outpost except the outpost where you bought them. So, 
you'll want to make sure you are committed to sailing to at least one other outpost to sell before you purchase any commodities. What can you expect to receive when you sell? Well, if you sell a commodity at an outpost where it is in surplus, you will earn less money than you spent purchasing it. So you will actually lose money. If you sell a commodity at an outpost where it is neither in surplus nor sought after, you can expect to make a small profit, a few hundred gold coins more than you spent to acquire the crate, plus any multiplier from your emissary grade. It's not bad if you just want to sell your remaining crates at the end of the night, but it's certainly not why you began this endeavor. Now, if you sell a commodity at an outpost where it is sought after, you can expect to earn a handsome profit. Currently, you can expect to earn double the amount you spent to purchase that commodity. That might not sound like too much at first, but if you wait to sell at emissary grade five, you'll get your additional 2.5 multiplier. So you'll earn five times the amount of your purchase price. If you've acquired three or more of those commodities, selling them all at five times their purchase price will be quite a nice little payout indeed. With this in mind, let's talk trade route strategy. The simplest way to engage with these trade routes would likely be to purchase surplus commodities and sell them directly to the outpost where they are sought after. However, you could likely make better use of your time. You could, for instance, sail to each outpost, purchasing every commodity available and selling only the sought after commodities. Ah, but more than gold could influence your selling strategy. When you sell commodities, you earn not only gold, you also increase your emissary grade. Importantly, we found that currently, our emissary grade increased the same amount whether we sold a commodity that was in surplus, sought after, or neither. So another strategy might be to sail to each outpost and sell every commodity you have for the maximum increase to your emissary grade, then purchasing all of what that outpost has to offer and sailing over to another outpost where you'll sell all of it there. That way, your grade and your multiplier on your earnings increases faster. Which strategy you employ will likely depend on risk preferences for having more crates on your boat to lose, how long you intend to trade along these routes, whether you intend to take on other merchant voyages to raise your emissary grade, how long you're comfortable sailing around flaunting that high emissary grade flag, etc. But hopefully those strategies give you some food for thought. Though the gold might be reason enough to sail these trade routes, there are also new emissary trade route commendations for buying, selling, and even stealing these new merchant commodities. Buy, sell, and steal enough, and you'll unlock the new Merchant Alliance hook and Merchant Alliance eye patch. All right, me hearties, that about does it. The ins, the outs, and all about the new Merchant Alliance trade routes. If you have any questions or if you discover anything that might help your fellow pirates who have stumbled onto this video, feel free to jot it all down in the comments. If anything changes or if we glean any additional insight, we'll be sure to add it to the description or pinned comment below. Season 2 is just beginning and trade routes are only the tip of the iceberg. So if you'd like to explore even more with us, we've listed some links you might like in the description too. Happy sales!